This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good evening, Rabbi Isai. We have a very interesting subject tonight. We're going to speak about the topic of Edim Zoymimim. Edim Zoymimim. <clears throat> the, in the subject of Edim Zoymimim, what, you know, let's just get the case very clear. Reuven and Shemoin, Reuven and Shemoin come into Bezdin, they testify about Levi, that Levi killed Yehuda. That's the case that the place can speak about. Why that case? That's the case they speak about. Reuven and Shemoin, Edim come in, they say, Ru, uh, Levi killed Yehuda. Well, if Levi killed Yehuda, Levi's Chayv Misa. So then, uh, Yisachar and Zvulan come in, they say, Reuven and Shemoin, how could you say Levi killed Yehuda? You say Levi killed Yehuda last Sunday. Last Sunday you went to Disneyland with us. How could you say Levi killed Yehuda in New Jersey? In New Jersey, Levi killed Yehuda in Lakewood? You weren't in Lakewood, you guys. You guys were not in Lakewood. You guys were in Disneyland. So what's the halacha? The Torah says, Va'asisem loy, We do to Reuven and Shimon, Ka'ashar zamam la'asos la'achiv. What Reuven and Shimon wanted to do to Levi. They testified Levi is a murderer. They testified Levi is Chayv Misa. They basically wanted to knock off Levi. They wanted to knock off Levi. So therefore we do to Reuven and Shimon what Reuven and Shimon wanted to do to Levi. Interestingly, the Torah ends off, Uviyarta hara mikirbecha. And you should eradicate the evil from your midst. What's that got to do with anything? Why is that an explanation of why we need to kill Reuven and Shimon. We need to kill Reuven and Shimon to eradicate the evil in our midst. Just say, What's eradicate the evil in your midst? Then Rashi brings down a famous drashan, which is the subject of tonight's shir. Kasher Zamam. We do to Reuven and Shimon what they plan to do to Levi. But not what they did to Levi. In other words, if they said let, that Levi killed Yehuda, and then Bezin went ahead and killed Levi for being a murderer. Well, once Reuben and Shimon were successful in carrying out their, their uh, plan and their plot, we will no longer punish them. It's only if they wanted to do it to Levi. But if they actually carried it out and Levi was punished from the Bezdin, then Reuben and Shimon, what happens to Reuben and Shimon? Nothing at all. They go scot-free. Yeah? Mikan Omru, from here we say, Hargu, that if Reuven and Shimon kill the guy, Ein Herogin, we will not kill them. So that's the rule of Kasher Zomam, the Loi Kasher Osa, as they plan to do, but not, uh, not what they actually did. Okay? That's a very important uh, Yusoid. That means the rule of, uh, ka- of Edim Zomimim is only what they plan to do, but not what they actually did. Um, Says the Mishnah in Makois. Rashi is not making this up. Rashi is quoting a Gemara. The Gemara in Makois, Helmet Beis, the Mishnah says, Eino Edim Zoymim Neragin. We do not kill Edim Zoymimim until the Edim have caused Bezdin to be Goymer the Din. In other words, it can't just be that Bezdin is deliberating over the matter. They had to have come to a conclusion that in fact Levi killed Yehuda. But not that the Bezin actually carried out the sentence. The Tzadokim said that we don't uh, give the penalty of Edom Zoymimim until we actually kill Levi, because they darsh in the past like Nefesh Tachas Nefesh, that we're only going to take away a life if, if they took a, away a life themselves. But the Chachamim say no, we do not kasher zamam v'loi kasher asa. And the Chachamim say, because the fact that the Torah says, V'asisim loi kasher zamam lasos le'achiv, you do to him what they plan to do to their brother. What do you mean their brother? He's dead. If he's dead, he ain't their brother anymore. The fact that we still call it their brother, okay, you came to write Shir, the fact that we still call it their brother, that, uh, that means he's still alive. Yeah, that means he's still alive. So the Chachamim say that if the Torah still calls it La'achiv, that means we're assuming that he's still, uh, still alive. Aye, why does the Torah say Nefesh Tachas Nefesh? Which implies that you're only Chayiv if you actually take away a life. From there the Chachamim learn that only if it's Nigmara Hadin. Only if Bezdin not only deliberated but came to a Psak. So the bottom line is, we have two psuk, and we have nefesh tachas nefesh, and we have the pasuk of kasher zamam lasos laachiv. Kasher zamam lasos laachiv implies the guy must still be alive. Levi has to still be alive. If Levi was already killed by Bezdin, then we will not issue a punishment to the Edim. 
but it also has to be Nigmar Hadin. Bezdin has to have already paskin. Because if Bezdin already, uh, if Bezdin didn't paskin yet, it doesn't come under the category of Nefesh Tachas Nefesh. It has to be a life for a life. So basically, the Gemara summarizes Tana Beribi Oimer. It's taught, Beribi, that means the great one said, Loi Hargu Neharogin. If the Edim didn't kill Levi, we will kill Ruven and Shimon. Hargu, but if Ruven and Shimon caused Levi to be killed, E Neharogin, we do not kill Ruven and Shimon. That's the rule of Kasher Zomam, Veloi Kasher Asa. Says the Gemara, Amar Aviv. So his father said, Beni Lav Kavachoymer, oh? It's a Kavachoymer. If we're going to punish Reuven and Shimon, when Reuven and Shimon merely wanted to harm Levi, why can't we make a Kav HaChoymer that we're certainly going to punish Reuven and Shimon if Reuven and Shimon actually killed Levi? Isn't that a Kav HaChoymer? If we're going to punish the Edim when they merely attempted, certainly we should punish them when they were successful. And the son said back, No, Amar Loi, Limaretanu Rabbeinu, our teachers taught us, Einoin Shin Minadin. We will never punish somebody based on a Kav HaChoymer. We will never say, well, well, you know, if somebody who kills accidentally goes into Golas, certainly if somebody who kills intentionally goes into Golas, no, Ein Oinshin Min Hadin. We do not offer punishment from an argument of Kavachana. The well, it, it could be forever, but it's supposed to be right away because of Inoy Hadin. So it's really a very small window of opportunity. So the truth is, the possibility for Aidim Zoymim is. Not that realistic, but it's in between the window of Gemardin and the carrying out of it. Okay. If somebody kills somebody that has Gemardin for Misa, he's Pater, because he's Nechshav Kameis. No, so even though he's Nechshav Kameis, but he's not Mamish Mes, he wasn't killed yet, that's the window of opportunity that uh, we have the rule of Edom Zayim. Okay. But if somebody kills somebody, no, the, the case. Pater. The case again is Levi killed Yehuda. I'm talking about the case. If somebody goes ahead and kills somebody that's not sure, that's, that has a Gemara Oh, Din. somebody kills someone he's that has there. a Gemara Din. Because he's like, he's like not uh-huh. a But we don't say so that by Edom Zaymim. Edom Zaymim should be considered also like they killed him already because he's not sure Gemara Din. No. Because <laughs> they were the ones who were going around that he should have the Gemara Din. Right. But he's not sure. He's not sure. No, but, no, but it's because, because there was Gamar Din already. Yeah, but they were the ones who were responsible for that right. Gamar Din. So they brought it upon him. So. Right. So, they, so, so, so they should be. So they should be Pater? Yeah. No. Because <laughs> so what I'm saying is. No, they, no, no, no. But so I'm saying. Yeah? I'm saying that, that just like. I understand, but the difference is that in this case, they no, were. No, so that's why they're being killed, because. So they're, they're, only, they're, they're only being killed because the guy wasn't killed yet. But if he was killed, if, if the, if the no. was already done, You want to explain that the reason why we don't kill them if, there yes. was a re- if we already killed him is because... Yes. Because no. he's no. Kashar Kameser already. That's no, no, no. That's, that, that's hard to say because they were the ones who made him Kasher um, Nechshav Kameser. So it would be hard to quit them for that reason. Let's go to the Ramam. The Ramam says in Hilchois Eidos, Parakhaf Halacha Beis, a very interesting Ramam. Mm-hmm. The Ramam enunciates this Halacha that once Levi is already killed, we will not kill Ruven and Shemayin. Um, because this is the din of Kasher Zamam V'loi Kasher Asa. Um, Kasher Zamam L'asois V'adayin Loi Asa. Meaning, look at the Ramam. Nerag Zeh, the one who was killed, Levi. Sheidu Olav, that they testified about Levi and then Levi, and Levi was killed. And then Reuven and Shimon were Muzam. We're not going to kill them. It has to be together. But if it was Asa, then we will not punish them. But says the Rambam, this din of Eloi Kasher Asa only applies to Misa. It doesn't apply to Malchus. Which means if two Edim say, Levi is of Malchus, and Levi gets Malchus, and then two Edim come and say, Reuven and Shema, and you were with us in Disneyland. How could you say, Levi is Chayiv Malkus? Then we will give Malkus to Reuven and Shema. The din of the Loi Kasher also only applies if they killed Levi. So if they killed Levi, we're not going to kill Reuven and Shema. But if they caused Levi to get Malkus, we will give Malkus to Reuven and Shema. Likewise, if Reuven and Shema were Mechayiv Levi money, if Levi already paid the money, then we will be Mechai of Reuven and Shimon money because the din of Eloi Kasher Asa only applies to Misa, it doesn't apply to Malkus, it doesn't apply to money. 
Ask the Kesef Mishnah, why not? Are we Doresh Kasher Zaman Veloy Kasher Asa, or are we not? If we say Veloy Kasher Asa, then by Malchus and by Mamoin, likewise we should say, if Reuven and Shimon were Mechai of Levi, Malchus or Mamoin, we should not punish Reuven and Shimon. So the Kesef Mishnah says, well, for money, there's a very easy answer. Why? For money, Toysus and Baba Kama says that money is Efshar Bechazara. Money could be returned. So even if Reuven and Shimon were Mechai of Levi money, and Levi paid the money, it's still together, it's still in the category of plotting. Because even if Levi already spent the money, it could always go back. It could always, in other words, even if Levi was Mechai of Yehuda money, you could, always, uh, t- you could always give the money back to Yehuda. So it's always considered a plan. Money is always a plan. Money is never permanent. You think you gave someone money? It's not permanent by them. It could always come back to you. So money is ne- never a permanent thing. But as the case of Mishnah, Malchus is. Because you can't use that svara for Malchus. So why would the Ramam say that when it comes to Misa, if they cause Levi to be killed, then Reuven and Shimon won't be punished. And if they cause Levi to get Malchus, Reuven and Shimon will be punished. But Malchus is not... Malchus is E.F. Shur, the Chazara. And therefore, says the case of Mishnah, Mishnah, that's why the Ravid says about the Rambam that this Rambam is a Shibosh. Because why would there be a difference between Malkois and Misa? Another Svara you could say, says the Kesem Mishnah, why by money, even if the Reuven and Shimon were Mechaev Levi the money, we would still punish Reuven and Shimon? Very simply, says the Kesem Mishnah, why don't we say Kasher Zamam if, you caused, if the Edom caused Levi to die? Because Ein Ein Shimon Adin. We will not punish using a Kav But we will obligate money using a Kav The whole reason why we say Kasher Zaman, Veloy Kasher Asa is you can't learn to Kasher Asa because that's a Kav HaChoymer and Eino Yinshim Adin. But yeah, we, we will penalize money Min Adin. We will use a Kav to be Mechaev someone money. So therefore when it comes to money it makes sense that even if Reuven and Shimon were Mechaev Levi the money we will penalize Reuven and Shimon monetarily. But again, why would it apply to Malchus? And therefore the Ravid says the Rambam is a Shibosh. Why would there be a difference between Shibosh? It's, it's a corrupted text. Why would the Rambam say there's a difference between Misa and Malchus? So now, Rabbi Isai, what we're going to learn today is... Yeah, true. True. But nevertheless, it's not a plan. It's not a plan. Just, even if you got healed, you still suffered. It still hurt. There's still... We're going to offer tonight six reasons why the Torah says that we're only going to obligate Edim Zoymimim if they plotted to harm someone, and not if they actually did. Which will start at the end. The Maral says, in number 19, on the final page, on the top right-hand column, he says that at first glance, The concept that we're only going to punish Edim Zoymimim if they plotted and not if they did, is like vinegar to the teeth and like smoke to the eyes, we're going to be more machmir on someone who tried to do something than someone who did do something. How does that make sense? What's the seichel of such a thing? And even though the maral says, what do you mean what's the seichel of it? I don't know. God said it. God said it. You know, it's not, the Torah is not nimusei b'nei adam. It's not human law. It doesn't, we don't have to understand it. But nevertheless, you know, if we're able to give it a rationale and have it make sense to our limited minds, it's always proper to do so. So we begin with the Ramban, an incredible Ramban. The Ramban says that you need to know number six. The Ramban says, let me ask you a question. Two Adim come in and say, Levi killed Yehuda. And two Adim come and say, Levi killed Yehuda, really? You say Levi killed Yehuda on Sunday in New Jersey? You guys, Ruven and Shemayin, Yusach and Zvulon say, you guys were with us in Disneyland. So the Torah says we're going to believe Yisachar and Zvulan. Why should we believe Yisachar and Zvulan? Why are they more trustworthy than Reuven and Shemayin? Reuven and Shemayin were the two biggest Rabbanim in America. 
Yisachar and Zavulan are two, you know, yeah. And we're going to believe Yisachar and Zavulan over Reuven and Shimon? Why? Why should we do that? Normally we say, my home hai me hai, my chazis to samach sahani, smay chahani. Why does the Torah say, believe Yisachar and Zavulan over Reuven and Shimon? By hakhasha we say, throw them all out of the court. Why by hazama do we say we listen to the last Adam? Says Ramban like this. It's a gezeras hamelech. Let's think about the following. Two Adim come in and say Reuven killed. Two Adim come in and say Levi killed Yehuda. Levi's in big trouble. What's about to happen to Levi? We're going to take Levi out and we're going to kill him. Right? Reuven and Shimon said Levi killed Yehuda. We're about to take Levi. Now Levi's innocent, possibly. But we're about to take him out and kill him. Just then, in the split second, Yusuf and Zavulam, they fly into the court from Disneyland. They say, what? You're going to kill Levi? Reuben and Shimon, you're with us. Think about the siyat of the Shemaya that Levi had. Think about how lucky this man is. He was about to be knocked off by false witnesses, potentially. And two random witnesses came in from the other end of the world, and in a, you know, a split second, they saved his life. Ooh, this guy has siyata deshmaya. God loves him. Why does God love him? Must be he's a tzaddik. Ha, ah, must be he's a tzaddik. And Reuven and Shimon try to harm a tzaddik. How, now how do we know that Levi's a tzaddik? We know he's a tzaddik because he had the siyata deshmaya that two of them came out of left field to save his skin. Oh, he's a guy who has siyata deshmaya. He's a guy God loves. God only lo- gives siyata deshmaya to tzaddikim. Kiloy atzdik Russia. God would never show such siyata deshmaya to a Russia. Must be Reuven, uh, it Must be Levi was a tzaddik. If Levi's a tzaddik, we're gonna nail Reuven and Shimon because Reuven and Shimon wanted to harm a good guy. How do we know he's a good guy? Beharaya, God saved his life like supernaturally by flying in these edim mazimim. Aber, if Reuven and Shimon testified that Levi killed Yehuda, and the Bezdin now wrongfully killed Levi. Now, Levi did not kill Yehuda. Reuven and Shimon were a bunch of liars. But wait a second. Why did God let it happen to Levi that Levi should be killed? But Levi didn't kill Yehuda. Why did Hashem make this happen to him? There's a din. Layat stick Russia. God would never justify a Russia. So God didn't justify Levi. Must be Levi is a Russia. And if he's a Russia, that means he deserved to die. So if he deserved to die, we're not going to punish Reuven and Shimon because Reuven and Shimon killed a trefa, a guy who deserved to die. Hagabat smicha. Let's say somebody shoots someone. And it turns out we do an autopsy and the guy was going to die anyway in a week. Do we kill the murderer? No, he killed the treifa. That's the whole makar of Roiv. How do you know you follow Roiv? Because why do we kill a murderer? But maybe the guy who he killed was a treifa. We don't do autopsies. Why do we kill a murderer? Maybe the person who he killed is a treifa. The answer is Roiv people are not treifas. But what if for whatever reason we did an autopsy and it turned out that the one who was Nerag was a treifa? We don't kill the murderer. So if Reuven and Shimon testify about Levi and Levi was killed, that means Hashem feels that Levi should die. If Hashem feels Levi should die, Reuven and Shimon only try to harm a bad guy. We're going to punish them? They, they were trying to harm a guy who deserved it anyway. Second of all, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to come to that. Okay, I'm going to come and why by a ghost is the, uh, are you so, at Misa if you, if you stop a ghost the ghost is in other words it can never live the final stages of uh, life isn't it say that you can't uh, sort the ghost yeah but because okay all good questions all good questions let me just finish let me just finish but all good questions so again if Reuben and Shimon are successful in killing Levi we know says Ramban that God participates in the decision of a court Elohim Nitzah Ba'adas Ba'adas Kel Elohim Nitzah Ba'adas Kel So that means God when the court decided Levi should die who decided with the court that Levi should die? God 
God would never have manipulated that decision unless Ivan Shem felt that that's what should happen to Levi. Mamela says Rambam, there are two reasons why, if in fact Reuven and Shimon knock off Levi, we're not going to do anything to Reuven and Shimon. Number one, the fact that Levi was killed it means he was a Ben Maves. And number two, Hashem also endorsed the decision of that Bezdin. If Hashem endorsed the decision of the Bezdin, how could we kill Reuven and Shimon? for killing someone who basically bezed in with Hashem's participation, paskin that he should die. So as he's asking, really, so that should exempt anyone who kills anybody, because if you kill anybody, the person was supposed to die. And uh, by the way, in the Eichmann case, the defense attorney for Eichmann used that argument. The defense attorney, it's on record that he said, the Ramban in Parshas Lachlacha, that the Mitzrayim said, what do you want from us? You know, you told us we need to kill the Jews, or torture the Jews, so, so, uh, I, so Eichmann's attorney said, God decreed the Jews should die, so how could you punish them? But the answer is, because who told you to be the Shliach? Right, so you say the same thing... Um, well, the same thing with Reuven and Shimon who testified about... The answer there's a difference between killing B'yadayim and being a conspirator. It's much worse to kill B'yadayim. Who told you to actively be the shliach to take this person's life? Elamai, you're just a conspirator, so there's a mitigating factor that the Yibam Shem wanted the guy to die anyway. But if it's such a good guy who has such extra special siyata deshmaya that the Yibam is going to bring an Adam from left field to get the guy off the hook, this is a guy God loves to conspire against such a guy, we're going to get you. That's the Ramban. Got it? The Ram- <laughs> Unbelievable Ramban. Now the Ramban says that if you conspire, but at the end of the day God saved Levi, that means Levi is the greatest guy in the world, and you're conspiring against such a good, a yid, we're going to nail you. But if you tack a, we're responsible for Levi's uh, demise, that means Levi was supposed to die anyway, plus God endorsed the decision, we're not going to do anything. Okay. Bukhar or not? Not that I'm aware of. By the way, the Sefer HaChinuch says the same thing. Sefer HaChinuch says that uh, he goes through the din, why is it that, that if the Adam actually killed someone, we're not going to kill them? He says, And unless Levi was Chayiv Misa, then Hashem never would have had that decision happen. It must be he was Roy Lekach, and Hashem was Nesgagel Hadavar Al Yidei Reuven and Shimon. These were Shoim. Okay, says uh, the Mashal, the Sefer Chinuch says is Mishahar Ages Atrefa. Okay, that's the first reason. Second reason, the Miri. Miri quotes the Goinim. Now I will tell you that the Kesef Mishnah says. Oh, so one second. Ari asked you you should say the same thing by Malchus, right? Or Mammon. Or Mammon. So Mammon you could say is Eshebe Chazara. But Malchus is like this. And this is what the Kesef Mishnah says. Kesef Mishnah says that, first of all, getting back to Asi's question also, and that is that even though when any, any, any time somebody kills someone, the Rebbe decided that that person should die, but there's an extra special siyata deshmaya that dayonim have. So if the dayonim paskin that the person should die, that means there's a much greater endorsement than just a regular gzerim and ashamayim. Says, says um, the Kesef Mishnah that it could be this is only by Misa. That it's not just regularly God would give, God would only... Uh, allow the Dayanim to make a mistake if the person's really worthy of it. But w- the fact that Hashem went so far as to endorse a decision of Dayanim that a person should actually die, Hashem would never allow that to happen unless the person really, really deserved it. Malchus, you know, it could be that, that the fact that Bezin made a mistake about a lesser punishment doesn't necessarily indicate that level of endorsement in Hashemayim. To have a bezin go so far as to kill someone, that indicates we must be endorsing it 100%. Otherwise, how could Hashem allow Dayan to make such a big error? But a minor error, the Kesef Mishnah says, maybe the Rebbe Hashem would allow. That's what, I, I don't think I would have made that said that far, but that's the Kesef Mishnah in number 12. Okay, let's see the Miri. Miri says like this, very Pashat. Miri says, 
the Gemara says in Makkas that why don't we say that if somebody kills someone Beshoigeg, they are Chayev to go into Golos. So certainly if somebody kills someone Bemezid, what does the Gemara say? No. Maybe if someone kills someone Bemezid, they don't deserve to go into Golos. They did such a bad thing, Hashem doesn't want them to get Kapara. That's the whole Svara of Enon Shem and Why don't we punish someone through a Kabbalah Chaymer? Maybe Hashem only wants someone to get punished if they do a smaller thing, so Hashem allows them to get Kapara. But if they did such a terrible thing, maybe the Yibbana Shem doesn't want them to get Kapara. Same thing here, says Meiri. If the Edom Zaymim merely plotted to kill someone, then we're going to kill the Edom Zaymim, because what they did is not so terrible. And will allow them to get a kapara. However, if they actually caused, in other words, they went through with their testimony to the extent that they actually killed someone, then we're going to say, we're not going to kill you. Maybe what you did is so terrible that God wants you to wait until you get to the big oven in Shamayim and then He'll punish you. Meaning maybe, maybe it's so terrible to testify falsely and to carry it out that you don't get an oinish at all because you don't deserve it. Ah! Oh. So, Daniel wants to know, one second, you, what you're going to say that it's so bad to cause someone to die through a conspiracy that you don't deserve a kapara, but even if you kill biyadayim, you get a kapara, so you should certainly get a kapara if you cause someone through a conspiracy. So actually, the Maskil of David, Rav David Pardo, wrote a commentary on the Toisefta called Chaste David, and it's on the sheet number 13. And he, he asked your question on the Kesef, he asked your question on the Meiri. Kesef Mishnah says as far like this as well, that, that it can't, it's so bad, but it's not worse than killing someone. So... It's not worse than killing someone. So I saw a very nice answer to this question. And that is, in a way, it is worse than killing someone. You know why? And the Meiri alludes to it. Meiri, the Kitzel Shana alludes to it. It's for sure worse to kill someone than to testify against them in one way, but in another way it's not. You get into a fight with someone, your anger is boiling, you're in the heat of the moment, you lose control. In order to kill someone with testimony, you have to pass the rigorous cross-examination of the Bezdin. That means you sat down and you, harvana, you, you put in tremendous harvanya to prepare your story with such accuracy and carefulness, it's premeditated. That means it, it went in with tremendous hachana. That means you had all the world, time in the world to cool, cool off. Actually, it's interesting... Uh, There's a Tanad Ve'eliyahu that says that the ten brachas in Sefer Yeshaya correspond to the Aser Sadebrois. So the Tolna Rebbe has a whole shmuz that the last of the Aser Sadebrois is Loisana Bereyachei Chakar, is the worst of all the Aser Sadebrois. You would ask, you know, it said, don't kill, don't steal, don't, don't commit adultery. And how does the Aser Sadebrois end? Don't testify falsely. That's the worst? Yeah. Because it requires such premeditation, you got to be so rotten to be able to do it. Okay, that's, that, I saw that answer. Um, the, the, in the Kamoit Seishalorav, they answer uh, this question with a similar type of swarm. Okay. They'll still get grilled. Not like Ruben and Shem. Why not? They don't. They just believe him. No, they believe them if they pass the grilling. But it's but like the Reuben Shimon grilling? Chaira. Is it? Why not? Uh-huh. I think so. Okay, so that's the second reason, that's the Meiri. The Meiri says a third svara. Okay, now we're starting uh-huh. to get into it. Meiri says, you know why we do not harm Yisach, you know why we don't harm Reuben and Shimon if they actually killed Levi? says it because it would, it would be what is called Zilusa de Beidina. Imagine if Reuven and Shimon testify that Levi killed Yehuda and Levi, Levi was killed. And then Yisach and Zvulun come and they say, Reuven and Shimon, you were with us. Yimanu ha-yisem. Okay. So imagine what's going to happen now if we kill Reuven and Shimon. Think about what's going to be on the front cover of the Five Towns Jewish Times. 
the court doesn't know what they're doing. First they kill Ruvain, and then they kill Shimon, and then they kill, first they kill Levi, and then they kill Ruvain and Shimon. So basically, the word is going to get out that the Bezin is incompetent. Once the word gets out, Bezin is incompetent, people lose faith in the court system, the judicial system, and Vish Esrei'eu, Chayim Beloi, the whole society will break down. You can't, if Ruvain and Shimon were successful in killing Levi, then uh, it's going to break down the whole court system. Basically, in the Ion Yaakov, he says a similar svara. Pnei Yeshua elaborates like this. Listen, listen to how we're going to explain it. He says the Pnei Yeshua, Zilusa Dina, if we killed Ruvain, excuse me, if we killed Levi, and then you're going to kill Ruvain and Shimon, that means Miman of Shach, an innocent person died. And Miman of Shach, an innocent person died. If Ruvain and Shimon are telling the truth, then we killed Reuven and Shema, and we killed two innocent people. If, Reuven, if Levi was a good guy, and Levi Taka didn't kill Yehuda, then we killed Levi. So basically, killing Reuven and Shema after Levi was killed already, is an advertisement that the Bezdin kills innocent people. Mashem came. If we only kill Reuven and Shema, if, if we only kill Reuven and Shema, if, Levi was not killed. So basically, what word is going to get out that what? Reuven and Shimon tried to kill Levi, but because of the great ingenuity of Bezdin, even though it wasn't their ingenuity, it was the fact that Yisach and Zvulan came in the splits in the, you know, in the right time, but word's going to get out that at the end of the day, Bezdin gets it right. But if we're going to kill Reuven and Shimon and Levi was killed, then it's basically advertising how incompetent Bezdin is. Okay? So, so far we have three... Because the answer is, the answer is like this. Right. It, you're right. Because if Levi was killed, now the truth is, you're right, Yossi. If Levi was killed, Levi was killed innocently. But at the end of the day, in people's minds, people know that it could be Reuven and Shimon were right and the Yisrael and Zvulan were wrong. All I'm saying is that the Bezdin is going to have a shame regardless. That's no, why? Yeah, because Reuven and Shimon are walking around when Yisrael and Zvulan just came. So there's a call that's going to go out there that okay. confidence is not... No, but what? Bezin doesn't... Just because um, Reuven and Shimon want to do something bad and they're alive, it's not going to say that Bezin's incompetent. Something's going to say that Reuven and Shimon lost Disneyland, right? Yeah, but okay, so, but, but we didn't kill them. We, we have... Yes, we, so there's no shame of, of their, cat, their, you know, their Katlanim, but there's a shame of incompetence. Though. Okay, but what are we going to do to them? In other words, still, oh, Ru- Reuven and Shimon, they're not going to get an aliyah. <coughs> and, you know, they're going to have a hard time finding a sheikh for the daughter. There's incompetence and incompetence. You know, there's, there's incompetence in killing people. And then there's just, well, you know, what do you want from Bezin? Anytime you have two... I don't, I don't think killing Reuven and Shimon here is, is, I think it's more competent to kill them than to leave them hanging. Because this way everyone... No, I, I think people are more comfortable... Understanding that you have two Edom against two Edom, so we don't know what to do. We're not gonna not we're gonna kill <laughs> Reuven and Shimon, but if we actually kill them and we kill Levi, I mean this business is out of control. So Wait, just following the rules, doesn't it flash back to the Torah? <laughs> yeah. What are they doing wrong, basically? That's what th- those are the cards that are, are dealt to them. So how can you call them incompetent? It's not me, <laughs> but if you were ever a rabbi. You would know that not just because you do what's right, it doesn't mean people are not going to talk. You know, there is such a thing, and I know it's hard to imagine, that a rabbi could do the right thing because he's just following the rules, and still there's going to be, you know, I'll tell you about it a different time, you know. Not, in, not that I would know, but I'm just saying, you know. Um, so it comes out like this. Let's come back to the Kesef Mishnah. Again, we basically said three svaras of why we don't kill Reuven and Shimon if, if Levi was killed. Number one, because if Levi was killed, then Levi was a bad guy, and Reuven and Shimon didn't do anything so terrible to uh, knock him off. Using that svara, the Kesef Mishnah says, we could explain why it only applies by Misa, not by Malchus. Because maybe God would only go... The fact that God went so far and endorsed the decision to kill Levi, that indicates Levi really deserved it. But the fact that Levi got Malchus unlawfully, that doesn't necessarily show that the Shalom is endorsing it completely, and maybe this doesn't apply by Malchus. 
Or the Kesef Mishnah says, based on the logic of of um, Zilusa de Beidina. Let's take a look in number 12 for a, mo- a moment. Based on the Svara of um, Enoin Shemin Adin, for a second, right? We said, maybe it's so terrible to actually cause the death of somebody that we don't want to give you Kapara. But who says that that applies to Malkus and Mamon? Maybe Malkus and Mamon are not so terrible, and then we'll, that we will give you a Kapara. I would add, according to the Svara of Zilusa de Beidina, that maybe it only looks terrible if the court's going to kill Levi and then kill Reuben and Shimon. But if they gave Levi Malchus and then they had to give Reuben and Shimon Malchus, is it really going to be, you know, such a scandal about the Bezdin? Anyway, th- this is the Kesef Mishnah. I just added the Surah, how Zilusa the Beidina fits into this. Okay, Rabbi, said so now we come to the really fun part. Okay? The Rebbe, Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz, takes over the sugya like only he knows how. Okay, you ready? This is Mamish. Go'ine go'inus. Shruvain and Shimon say, Levi killed Yehuda. Yisach as well and said, you were with us in Disneyland. What if, Rabbi Yisai, Levi would get up and say to Yisach as Zavulan, Shruvain and Shimon were with you in Disneyland. Shruvain and Shimon are saying, Emes Lamitai. They saw me kill Yehuda in New Jersey. They're right. Yeah? You don't believe them. What would be if the Baldin himself endorses the first Adem? Ain't no Adam Asim 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 Says Rabbi Yonason Ibishitz, in his opinion, it destroys Hazama. If the Baldin himself says that the two first Adim were right, that Taka they were right, they saw me kill, then, now we're not going to kill Ruvain, maybe, because we have two Adim saying not. But we're not going to kill Reuven and Shimon either because the Baal Din supports the Reuven and Shimon. That's the Chiddush Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz. Is he get killed? No, he's not going to get killed because we have two Edom acquitting him. But Reuven and Shimon are not going to get killed because the Baal Din supports him. That's the Chiddush Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz. Why wouldn't what? No, he gets all... No, he, no, he's not off because of what he says. He's off because Yisach and Zavulan are Mazim the first Adim. Why wouldn't Levi always do that? Because everyone just walks away. Because he still has to marry off his kids. Okay? So that's a Chiz Rabbi Yonis. It says Rabbi Yonis, and this explains the whole sugya. If, what's the halacha if Reuven and Shimon testified Levi killed Yehuda and then Bezdin killed Levi? So the halacha is that we will not, and then Yisrael Hezbollah and come and say, Reuven and Shimon, you're with us. We cannot kill Reuven and Shimon. You know why? Because Reuven and Shimon would say that you guys think we were with you in Disneyland. If, if Levi was alive, he would stand up and say, we're right. And therefore, you can't kill us, Misafik! But if Levi is still around, then Reuben and Shimon can't say, Well, Yusach is a Vulan. You're not right. Really? The Yusach is a So why doesn't uh, Levi support you? Why isn't Levi saying that Taka, you saw him? The fact, says Rabbi Yonis, and now we understand why we believe the second Adem over the first Adem. Because if Taka, the first Adem were right, then why wouldn't Levi go along with it? So I would have said, because he still has to marry off his kids. But, 
But this is the incredible chiddush of Rabbi Yonis and Think carefully. Again, Rabbi Yonis, it's all based on one chiddush and halacha. That if the Baal Din would get up and concur with the first Edim, then we would never kill the first Edim. Therefore, says Rabbi Yonis, if the Baal Din is not here, the first Edim could always save their skin by saying, if he were here, he would defend us. But still, we do whatever, if we have any tzad whatsoever to acquit Edim, to save someone from Misa, we'll do it. And that tzad is that if the Baal Din was here, he would get up and defend them. He would get up and, and say that, I, that they're right, I yeah. should kill them? Yeah, maybe. Because he sees two innocent people about, right, listen. Reuben and Shimon are about to be killed. Their wives and their families are crying. So, the, maybe the Baldin would get up and say, you know what, uh, I have Rachmanus, you, you're taka right, I did kill that person. Rather than see Yisachar and Zavulun die. No, Yisachar and Zavulun, nothing's going to happen to Yisachar and Zavulun. They're off anyway, they're good. Yisachar and Zavulun are safe. It's just Reuven and Shimon are being killed. So if Levi is not around, why we should be choshe, said Rabbi Yonis and Ibishet, said... Maybe they're safe. Ah. Comes Rav Baruch to Umim Frankel, the Hagoyz Baruch Tami, and he l'chayra shlugs up Rabbi Yonis and Ibishet. The mamish going to Kakashi. You ready for this Kasha? You hear this guy gonna be so happy the rest of the night. Says uh, says the Hagoyz Baruch Tam. According to Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz, it should come out that if Reuven and Shema testify, Levi killed Yehuda, and then Levi has a heart attack, then then Levi died. Then it should come out that Reuven and Shimon, and then Yisach and Zvulun come and say, Reuven and Shimon, you manu you were with us. Then uh, Reuven and Shimon should not be killed. Why? Because if Reuven was still, if, if Levi was still alive, Was there a Gemar If Levi, yes, if Levi was still alive, he would have agreed that Hitaka killed Yehuda. In other words, according to Rehonis and Ibeshitz, what's the Svara, why? If they killed Levi, then we're not going to punish Reuven and Shemayin. It has nothing to do with them killing Levi. It's the fact that Levi's not around. So says the Baruch Tam, well, in that case, if Levi died, then it should destroy Hazam. And we know that's not true. It's only the Loi Kasher Asa. I know, I can tell you another case. What if Levi all of a sudden became a Shaita? You know, or, or whatever. Or he went on a trip. He went to outer space. That's the Kasher and Rabbi Anderson Ibishitz. Okay? Their answer is, Legabe himself, we don't believe him, and Legabe defending the Edim and saving them, we do believe him. We say, Pagino Nemanas. Next, okay? Here's where it gets. He's, mm. not, he's not really making himself a Russian because Ruben and Shem We don't believe him. Already made him a Russian. So he's not really making himself a Russian. He's just agreeing with what they're saying. So they're already calling him a Russian that, that he killed somebody. Okay, or another, or another way of saying it is, let's say he says that Shisach and Zavula, no, um, they weren't with you, they were with me. Maybe I didn't kill, but they were with me. Okay, Marv Rabbi Now we come to the incredible Lamdas over here. There's a Tshuva, and Shalas Tshuva's Evan Yikara, or Binyamin Aryeh Hakoyen Weiss, who writes... That a certain secular scholar came to him saying, you know, your Torah, it's impossible to understand. Why would it be that if Adam merely attempted to harm someone, we kill them? And if they actually did kill someone, then they're off the hook. So he says one of the most incredible reasonings, but you have to help come. Okay? This is Gishmak. Who says this? Rabbi Yamin Aryeh HaKoyen Weiss. An Orthodox rabbi. Okay? He says like this. Shaz Rechivus Evan Yikara. He's a tremendous Bucky, a buff, Bucky Mufla. Number, Number 17. <coughs> he says like this. The starting point is not that it makes sense when Adim merely try to attempt to kill someone, we <coughs> kill the Adim. The starting point is that it makes sense when Adim actually kill Levi. And Yisachar and Zvulun come and are mazim them that we don't kill Reuven and Shimon. That's the starting point. Why does it make sense that if Reuven and Shimon successfully killed Levi, and then Yisachar and Zvulun are mazim them, 
Why does it make sense that we're not going to do anything to Ruven and Shimon? Because the starting point is two against two. My chaz is the sum chaz ahai, smay You have two edim against two edim. Why in the world should you believe Yisar Chen Zavulan over Reuven and Shimon? Reuven and Shimon are honest guys. They say Levi killed Yehuda. They killed Levi. Now Yisar Chen Zavulan say, you were with us. Well, maybe Yisar Chen Zavulan are lying. So the starting point is, it is correct not to kill Reuven and Shimon just because Yisar Chen Zavulan say, you were with us. Maybe Yisar Chen Zavulan are lying. But now the question is, so it even becomes more difficult to understand. So why when Reuven and Shimon merely attempt to kill Levi, and then Yisach and Zvulon are amazing then, why then do we kill Reuven and Shimon? This halacha is the linchpin, is the fundamental principle of all Jewish court cases. There is a Yetzir Hara that people have, that when they see someone who is about to be killed by a court, they have Rachmanus, and a person would testify falsely to try to save someone's skin. Let's say Levi killed Yehuda. So Yehuda's dead. <coughs> Levi is being put on trial. Levi's wife is there. She's weeping. Who's going to support me? He has 19 daughters who just came out of the best seminary, and he has to marry them off. And what's going to be if they kill Levi? So... A person might mistakenly think, I'll go testify and say that Reuven and Shimon, who claim Levi killed Yehuda, Reuven and Shimon were lying, they were with us, in order to save Levi's life. Because anyway, if Levi dies, it's going to bring Yehuda back to life. Anyway, the guy who was killed is dead. So why, why does it hurt the world that Levi, why, Levi has to die also? Why should Levi die? There, there's a very big danger. That a person, that two Edim may come and try to save someone's skin who deserves to die. And that's why the courts always warn people and say, you know, if you're going to acquit Levi, you're going to be destroying the legal system. Because then nobody's going to be afraid to commit a crime because they know that they'll always get bailed out. So the Dayanim always have to warn people, be careful, watch out, don't acquit somebody unlawfully because it's really not right to society at large. That Le- Levi was the murderer, right? Yeah. So what do you want to say? Saying that Levi would have that same Rachmanus because we know the quote you were just saying before that if he says that no, really Reuben and Shimon were right, right? So maybe he'd have the same philosophy that he's going to have Rachmanus because he knows that then Reuben and Shimon are going to die. So that's why he's going to say <coughs> whether it's true or not true that he that, that he's validated. I mean, according to Rabbi Yonason Ibishitz, that he could always defend Reuben and Shimon. Why is there not that concern that he is able to do that? Right. Okay, good question. But that's a halbat because there he's only defending conspirators. Here we're talking about defending murderers. Yeah, but either but it's but the, result. Yeah, you're right. I hear. Again, that's in the world of Rabbi Yonason Ibishitz. That's his chadash. Again, there, there's this always da- there's this always a danger that two Aiden may come and acquit someone unlawfully. So we need to stop that. We need to prevent that. So at Ruvain and Shimon saw the Tmimos Levi kill Yehuda, and they came into Bez and they said Levi killed Yehuda. Right now Levi's about to be killed. We need to watch out for that potential Yisachar Zavulan who's going to come and say, oh, how am I going to get Levi off the hook? We're going to lie and say, Reuven and Shimon, you're with us. In order to avoid that, those, those um, misplaced Rachamonim, Bezin is forced, the Tarak Dersh is forced, to prevent such a matzav by saying to a potential Yisachar Zavulan, that you think you're going to save Levi's skin, but you should know that if you're going to say that Reuven and Shimon are with us, you're going to be killing two innocent people. So now Yisach and Zavulon are going to think twice before they, their misplaced Rachmanus gets the better of them. Because yes, they want to have Rachmanus on, on Levi, but they're not going to have Rachmanus on a murderer at the expense of two innocent guys. So really the halacha, and that, the, the halacha, that if you plan on harming, uh, if you plan on harming witnesses, so really the halacha, that if you plan on um, killing someone, we're going to kill you. 
which is basically we're telling Reuven and Shimon, the fact that you wanted to kill Levi, we're going to kill you if you're turned out to be Adam Zoymimim. <coughs> that halacha is the safeguard to make sure we don't have some, you know, um, misplaced uh, Rachamanim come in and destroy the court system. But if Levi already died, there's no motivation at all for Yisachar Zavulan to come in and save Levi's skin anyway because Levi's dead. So if that's the case, we could go back to the original halacha, two against two, we don't believe either. So if Levi's dead, if Levi's dead, Taka, we don't have to worry that anybody's going to save anyone's life. We don't have to worry about that. We have no reason to believe the second Adam over the first Adam. The only thing is, we have to be concerned that if Levi is not dead, Adam might come and lie to save Levi's skin. And in order to prevent Adam from coming and saying, um, to, uh, from saving Levi's skin, we perforce will believe the second Adam over the first Adam in order to prevent them from saving Levi's skin. And the insurance is, you're going to save Levi's skin, but you're going to be knocking off Reuven and Shimon. That's the pshat and the chiddush of Adam Zoyim. And why believe the second Adam over the first? To create the safeguard to make sure... And if Taka Yusuf Hezbollah do come in, it's because they know that Reuven and Shimon are Taka liars, and Levi is really innocent, and that's, and the, and that's why we believe them. So it's not a Gzeris HaKasa? It still is a Gzeris but the, this is the Chachma Hol Yoyna behind the Gzeris HaKasa. It doesn't feel like the Pasa Kasa. The Kasha yeah. Asa is, obviously you don't kill. Meaning the Drasha is Kasha Zaman, meaning you're learning the like Kasha Asa. Here you're saying the Kasha Asa, that's Pashtas. Right. You're learning the Kasha Zaman. Kasha Zaman, that's... The Pasa should have used, the, the Pasa should have said... Kasher Asa, and the Drasha should have been, oh, but Kasher Zomam, then, then they should be fine. <laughs> but I don't need the Torah to say Kasher Asa because that's the Pashtas, right? It should have said Veloy Kasher Asa? Because the whole Drasha here, you're learning. Okay. Let me wrap it up, yeah? <laughs> There really is. That's the thing. That's a good question. Because they didn't have to be amazed. They could have been makhesh and gotten Levi off the hook. They could have just said, you're wrong, he didn't, he didn't kill. <coughs> Let me tell you over the morale. Morale is oyem benoira. Okay, Two rationale of the morale, why we only punish Adam who tried to kill someone and not who actually did. So this, now we're moving out of the lambdas and getting to the makhshava. This is oyem benoira. Says Maral, two explanations. The first one is on the bottom of the right hand column. Says Maral, an amazing thing. <laughs> Why does the Torah say, You're eradicate the evil from your midst? What does that got to do with anything? Why is that in the Pasuk of Kasha Zamalai Kasha Rasa? So says Maral, that means the Torah only wants you to eradicate evil that's present b- before your eyes, not that happened in the past. So he says like this. If someone kills someone, biyadayim, that's a maisa. A maisa leaves an imprint, a roishem, and an act has a repercussions and is always staring you in the face and we always punish for an act because it's here and now. But that's not um, Edom Zoymim. Edom Zoymim were nailing somebody for their plot. So listen carefully. <coughs> Reuven and Shimon plotted to kill Levi. Bezdin was going the din. That means in, in the court case, Bezdin Paskind were going to follow the plot of Reuven and Shimon. That means the plot of Reuven and Shimon is now here in the courtroom. So right now in the courtroom there's an evil plot. We got to destroy it and kill Reuven and Shemayin. But if Reuven and Shemayin now through their plot Bezdin killed Levi so their plot is ancient history. It's out of the courtroom already. They didn't do the act. The act's on Bezdin. We're not punishing Bezdin here. We're pu- we would punish them. But their act is already in, uh, in the past. It's not in the courtroom. But the Torah says, will be mi The concept of punishment 
is not deterrent. It's eradicating the evil before your eyes. God doesn't want there to be evil staring you in the face. So if it was merely the plan of the Edim, and it was not carried out yet, but Bezin was about to carry out, so that plan is looming in the court. So we could, pl- we could destroy that plan by killing the Edim. Once the Edim's plan was taken by the Bezdin and acted upon, so then the plan is, is, is uh, out. It's not in the courtroom anymore. Because we already, we already uh, acted upon it. It was already concretized. So the plan is ancient history. The act was the act of Bezdin. We're not going to punish for that. And therefore that's the logic of Kasher Zaman Velay Kasher Asa. Because they're stupid, the like old the people, truth. I don't know. How am I to tell them the truth? Or they're stupid. They don't like they're not them. stupid. <laughs> they, don't, they, they were trying to kill the guy. Grilled. They're being grilled, they're not stupid. They're bad, they they're know, evil. They know that, they know that you, you and self are going to come, then, then they're going to be... It's like anybody who does something wrong and they could get caught, you know? You, why would they take the chance? <coughs> why would they do that? If I don't they know. know. They can get killed. They can be killed for it. How am I to tell the truth? Maybe they are telling the truth. Okay, we'll end with this. I hear. We'll end with this. Says the Maral, Kasher Zaman Vlay Kasher Asa. The truth is, these Edim, Ruven and Shemayim, did they do anything bad? Did they do anything bad? They never did anything bad. All we're going to nail them for is conspiracy. You're going to kill someone for a conspiracy? The answer is no. We will never kill someone for a conspiracy. By the way, it's a lav shem by Misa. Testimony is not a Misa. So you don't give somebody malchus for ain by Misa. How are you going to kill somebody for ain by Misa? The answer is very interesting. The punishment of Adam Zoyim is not a punishment. You know what it is? It's a law of reality. I'll give you an example. You ever play dodgeball? Okay? With a real, real gishmaka ball. A really hard ball, but a very bouncy ball. And it's going to do one of two things. You're going to bomb it in the guy, and he's going to catch it and absorb the blow and like take five steps back and trip back and hold on to it. Or, you're going to hit him so hard, it's going to propel off him right back into you. Those are the two options. Either it's going to have an effect, or it's going to bounce back. This is called the boomerang effect. When somebody has an evil plot, one of two things could happen. It's not a punishment. Either the plot will be effective, and will land on the person who was plotted against, and then, then it's over. And we're not going to kill the plotter, you know, he's not going to be rewarded in Shemayim. God will take care of him, but it's not something that deserves Misa. But, if that plot did not go into the person who was uh, hurled against, it will then propel back on the one who hurled it. That's just the law of reality. That's Kasha Zaman, Vlai Kasha Asa. If it's Kasha Asa, meaning, if Ruvain and Shimon Taka killed Levi, if their plan yeah. killed Levi, then that plan stops right there by Levi. Oh, we should kill Ruvain and Shimon. For what? Plotting? You don't kill someone for plotting. But if they merely tried to, and it was not effective, so now they threw it, what's going to happen to that plot? It has to bounce back. That's the din of Kasher Zomam, like Kasher Asa. Says Maral, we see Bechlal, the Yibam Shem operates this way. In Mitzrayim, Asher Zodu Aleim, the Mitzrayim planned to drown all of us. The reason why they were drowned is because they didn't, they didn't get around to drowning all of us. And says Maral, the ultimate example of where this played out is who? Haman. The Pshat in Purim is Edim Zoyimimim. Haman plotted to kill the Jews on the tree, the gallows, it has to happen to him. It's not that Pshat Achashver said, you know, oh, how convenient, I happen to have a gallows here, okay, put Haman on it. No, there's a certain, like, there's certain justice to it. That if someone plots on something and it did not take effect, it's only right that it should bounce back and take effect on the person who plotted it. 
That's the difference, says Ma'al, between Kashas Amal and Kashas So I think, B'siyat to the Shemaya, hopefully we have a little bit of an added insight into this. So again, number one, the Ramban learns if you did it, that means the person deserved to die and Hashem went along with it. And then you have the Me'iri, that maybe if you actually killed the person in such a bad Anavera, you don't deserve Kapara. Or you have the other answer, the Me'iri, and that is it's Zilusa the Beidina, if you actually kill the person. Or you have Rabbi Yonis and Ibish that say, if you kill the person, then what's going to be? You could always say that if the person was here, he would have, been, he would have uh, concurred with the first Edim. Or you have the Lamdus of the Evan Yikara, that as a deterrent that people do not falsely try to defend Levi, we have to make sure to let, that if Yusachar and Zavulan try to get Levi off the hook, they're going to be killing Ruvain and Shimon. But if Levi's already dead, there's no reason to make such a deterrent. Or, we have the two svaras of the maral. So that's actually seven, I believe. We have the two svaras of the maral. That number one, that you can only you want to destroy something that's present. A machshava is present, but once it's transformed into a maisa, the machshava is not in the courtroom anymore. Or the pshat is... If it, is, if it already went into effect, then it will not boomerang. But if it didn't go into effect, then it will boomerang. Rabbi, say thanks everyone for listening. Have a great night. Shkayach. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.